Abigail Adams, born Abigail Smith on November the 11th, 1744 in Weymouth, Massachusetts, was a second of four children to congregational pastor William Smith and his wife Elizabeth. Though Abigail had no real formal education, she was possibly the most highly educated woman of her day. Her mother taught her to read, write, and cipher, and she had the use of her father's, her uncle's, and her grandfather's large libraries, as well as their tutorage, to learn Latin and Greek. She studied English and French literature. She constantly devoured Shakespeare and the classics, as well as the history of Western civilization. In 1762, when Abigail was 17, her third cousin, 26-year-old John Adams, came visiting the Smith household with his friend Richard Cranch, who was engaged to Abigail's older sister. John was immediately dazzled by Abigail's beauty and brains. Abigail's father married them on October the 25th of 1764, and after the wedding, 19-year-old Abby climbed up behind her new 28-year-old husband, John, and off they rode on a single horse to start their new life together in a little cottage on a farm that John had inherited south of Boston in Braintree, Massachusetts. Their first baby, Abigail, was born nine months later, and within the next 10 years of their marriage, John and Abigail had six children. In 1768, they moved to a little house in Boston where John's law practice expanded, as did his political involvement and his activism. But when the British occupied Boston under the Intolerable Acts in 1774, Adams moved his family back to the farm in Braintree. Today there stands a memorial there of rough stones, showing where on June the 17th, 1775, 31-year-old Abigail and her children and the children of Dr. Joseph Warren, whom she was babysitting, watched the Battle of Bunker Hill from their roof. Dr. Warren was killed in that battle. Writing to John after the battle, Abigail wrote, My bursting heart must find vent through my pen, as she called for liberty for America. As historians, we must be dedicated to a reasoned and investigated reconstruction of primary sources and nobody in the revolutionary era gives us a better opportunity than for that than Abigail Adams. For we know about more about her than any of the founders' wives, in fact, more than most of the founders themselves, because of the over 1,200 letters written to her husband John and from her him back to her. While he was away at Philadelphia for the Continental Congresses, or off to France and England as our ambassador after the Revolutionary War, or when he served as the vice president under George Washington. Ironically, the long separations that caused them their greatest pains also gave them their greatest fame. Historian Joseph Ellis ranks Abigail Adams as the most amazing woman in the history of America, and he calls these letters a treasure trove of intimacy and candor. John constantly asked his beloved and trusted Abigail for advice on many matters, and their letters are filled with intellectual discussions on government and politics. In perhaps her most famous letter of March 1776, she reminds her husband, don't forget the ladies, and somewhat tongue-in-cheek, uses the very rhetoric against the tyranny of males that the men were using against the tyranny of Egypt. She wrote, I long to hear that you have declared independence. Now in the new code of laws, remember the ladies, and be more generous and favorable to them than your ancestors. Do not put such unlimited power into the hands of the husbands. Remember all men would be tyrants if they could. If care is not paid for the ladies, we are determined to foment a rebellion and will not hold ourselves to any laws in which we have no representation. <laughs> in 1796, 61-year-old John Adams became the president, second president of the United States. Abigail's influence with her husband was so obvious that instead of referring to her as the first lady, Jefferson's Republicans sarcastically called her Mrs. President. While serving as First Lady, she not only hosted weekly dinners for dignitaries and made frequent public appearances with and for her husband, but she also raised the children of her brother, Will Smith, her brother-in-law, John Shaw, and her son, Charles, all of whom lost their families because of alcoholism. And she also held an evening school in the President's house, in which blacks were as welcomed as whites, for John and Abigail were ardent anti-slavery advocates for all of their lives. Abigail died on October the 28th of 1818 at the age of 73, just two weeks shy of her 74th birthday. Tears welled up in 82-year-old John's eyes as he held her hand. Her final words were, Do not grieve, my friend, my dearest friend. 
I am ready to go. And John, it will not be long. Abigail Adams' epitaph reads, As daughter, wife, and mother, a model of domestic worth, her letters are a treasure.